Yeah, that's that's a that's a, a great question. So you know, there's always this trade-off between security and then uh, and then ease of use, right? So there there are reasons why, for example, Amazon.com uh, or even your banks does not mandate uh, having their customers put in multi-factor authentication because they know they're going to lose a percentage of business. People, some, you know, people just may not even have smartphones to do it. They just don't want to bother. And they, and they, that's a risk that they're willing to take. One of the biggest mistakes that I've seen internal information security directors and, and CISOs is when they become, they, they keep saying no to the business. Now there are certain things that are egregious. Right? And I've seen this. I'll give you an example where, let's say, a marketing department at a medical device company, they just spun up their own FTP server unprotected uh, and were getting vendor information and sharing information. That's clearly a bad thing. But by and large, if, an, if let's say, an executive wants to say, listen, you know, we want to move to the cloud or I want to do business with this vendor, or do we – always need multi-factor authentication on all of these systems because it's starting to impact sales. So this is something where it's easy to say, you know, yep, nope, this is the standard. And there may be a reason for that from a compliance standpoint. But I think a better answer is really trying to look at the business vision, the goals, the values, and seeing how these things Potentially, maybe even security could be a competitive advantage because sometimes it is. If you increase security, and this is something that you could tout in your marketing materials, it may actually be a differentiator. I have clients in my consulting practice that are doing just that. They up the game on across the board, and now they're telling all their customers, look, we think we're probably one of the most secure organizations in this field. But in order to make that a uh, you know, to go through that and come up with an answer, there has to be an analysis. I think that information security people are too quick to say no. And if you think about it, if you're if someone if an executive is coming in your office and saying, "Look, all this extra security, like, could we do such and such?" If you tell that person no right off the bat you're probably not going to win too many brownie points and they're going to start going around you. But if you have the conversation and think about what's the real goal, what's the real risk, it may be just explaining to that executive, listen, if you don't do this, you're going to be out of compliance or it's putting the organization at risk and here's why. But again, it's a business risk decision. The executive might say, you know what? We don't care. This the same way the Amazon executives allow people to use, let's say, weaker passwords than one would use in banking, right? It's a business. It's a business decision. They don't want to make it hard for customers to go on their site and forget their password, right? So I guess you know the the main message here is to be business first. Always think business. How can we make this happen? And if you do the analysis and you come back and you can say, well, look, in order to do this, to, to keep the system secure, if you want to do this particular initiative, we have to implement these additional controls, additional hurdles, additional, um, you know, a spend to secure it. Again, let, let them decide. Again, if you're dealing with the right, this is why I always advocate governance, um, you know, board ownership, having an information security committee to help make these decisions because again, it's a conversation around risk. The same way that, let's say, a CFO might, uh, you know, come into a board meeting and say, "Wow, you know, our biggest customer hasn't paid us in six months. Should we charge them late fees, or should we cut the cut their loss?" Right? Again, that's a business decision that involves some pros and cons, and that's what we're advocating here to, to be that business enabler and drive the conversation. 